Pam. I love that song. So that kind of makes me want to put my hands up in the air and praise the Lord, you know? Yes, beautiful. All right. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I can see that you guys have already decided to practice social distancing. <laughs> I'm not sure that was by intention, but it happened that way. Uh, let's see. Would like to have a leaders meeting after church so that we can be on the same page when it comes to COVID and the changes that are beginning to take place. Um, dealing with masking, social distancing, and so forth, just so that we're kind of all together on that. The uh, food pantry this last Thursday, we had five folks, had a couple regulars who, uh, for one reason or not, primarily health, I believe, were not here. Um, so, and we got lots of things getting ready for next Saturday, which is uh, a major, major event here, probably the major event of the year for us as, uh, as our site will be used for the uh, fall festival. So Marla, do you have anything in particular to ask of folks or got that all lined up pretty much? No, we'll probably need some more um, help um, with the talk walkie-talkies and the strawberry shortcake. Um, I, I don't know for sure. Joan, are you going to be able to work? Uh, You can still get the names, but you can't talk to them. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it will. So we're going to put up tents Friday, right? Pop-ups Friday morning and uh, anyway. All right. You know, that'll work. <laughs> All right, so that's the way we want to do it. We want to put the tents up Thursday and... Uh, and the tables, All right. So keep in mind, I am labor. You know, you say, that goes there. I salute. We do it. That, I don't know, nine o'clock, you want to say? If it's as hot as it is now, the earlier the better, frankly. We'll, we'll, get to, we'll work that out. We, we'll work that out. Linda had something. Yes, yes, Linda. The other thing that we're going to have to take off for a fall festival, and we All right, cupcakes for the cakewalk, right? Very good, all right. Hey, thanks for coming. You know, it's obvious that somebody's in the back waving his hands, I, I'm, yes sir. All right. It does take at least two, preferably four people to put those little puppies up. Yes. Yes, it does. All right. So early Saturday morning. It's going to be a busy week and weekend, friends. All right. I think we've got everything. So would you stand as you were able? And join with me in our opening hymn, which is, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no 
shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow blessings all of mine with ten thousand beside great is thy faithfulness great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies i see all i have needed thy hand hath provided Lord, unto me. God has lavished us with every perfect gift <coughs> from above and called us to living intimacy through the beloved one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our invocation this morning, unchanging God, you have blessed us forever through the beloved one, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Born again by your word of truth, let us live out your love, doing your word, caring for the weak and vulnerable in their distress, and ever pursuing your reign of justice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Let us confess our sins to our loving God who calls us close through our beloved Savior, Christ Jesus, our Lord. Will you please join with me in our prayer of confession? Loving, righteous God, our hearts are defiled by the wickedness you hate. You have called us to yourself, but we have gone away. Forgetting your loving word, we cling to dead traditions, deceiving ourselves, we abandon your commandments. Hypocrites, we honor you with our lips while our hearts are far from you. Cleanse our hearts from evil intentions. Cleanse our tongues from evil words so that our worship may be pure and undefiled and we may live with you in love for others. Amen. Our generous God has given us the perfect gift of forgiveness. 
Jesus Christ our Lord, who has liberated us from dead tradition and made us new by the living word, filling our hearts with God's love. Praise be the name of Jesus. Amen. This is our time of joys and concerns. So I ask you, do you have any celebrations? You wake out there? Huh? I have a couple celebrations. There's a couple birthdays this week. One would be Marla, who's having a birthday. We won't ask what the number is. We'll not do that. And Doris, who's not here. So let's sing happy birthday. You guys good for that? All right, we can do it. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear loved one. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, that's why we call this your church family. All right. Any other uh, celebrations or uh, joys and concerns? I have some that were raised. Yes, Angela. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayers. Edwin. <laughs> All right. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Any other joys or concerns? I kind of have a list, yes. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. Uh, Faye would like to ask prayers for her sister, Pam, who uh, was in an accident this last week and uh, kind of really shook her up pretty bad. I don't think there's other than her car was totaled, uh, but it was kind of a real stressful situation for her. So Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. I'd also ask uh, prayers for one of our food pantry persons that's been with us a really long time. Her name is Dorothy. And uh, Dorothy, I got a call Thursday morning that uh, Dorothy was in D at DMH with COVID and she's in her 90s. So it's a pretty serious situation that she's in. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, and I see that Bob Mullington family, does that sound no. right? No. Millington. Millington family. I'm assuming that he has passed, does that sound right? So pray for that family. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Uh, Angela has asked for some prayers for uh, Clara and Dick Aerosmith, who are the parents of a very, very long time friend of hers. Both of them have COVID. So Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And also prayers for Jer Jerica Moyer, 
who is under quarantine due to exposure to COVID at school. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And lift up uh, prayers for just the families of school-aged children, our schools, our faculty, uh, administrators, bus drivers, all those folks that are involved in seeing that school happens. Uh, I can't imagine the concerns and worries that they have as they try to put things together in a calm and meaningful fashion, especially with the chaos of COVID. So Lord, yes. One more COVID. Um, Jenny Williams, her daughter and son-in-law have it very bad also. And they're at home and they're trying to take care of each other. So we need to remember them in prayer too. Okay. Your name is Mark and Tammy Allen. Tammy Allen, A-L-L-E-N. Okay. Thank you. So Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayers. prayers. I think also uh, lift up the, some of the uh, unbelievable things that are going on in the world around us. The hurricane, uh, just as we were getting ready to come in this morning, Ron had said that the hurricane has hit the Louisiana coast about 15 minutes earlier. Uh, we know, understand probably more firsthand the issues with schools and all of that. Uh, COVID that's on the, that will impact all of us, you know. And uh, the uh, situation in Afghanistan, this nightmare that we have been living with for nearly 20 years now. Um, anyway. Lord, in your mercy, please, 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 hear our prayers. Hear our prayers, Lord. Would you join with me, friends, in a prayer that Christ Jesus himself taught us? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Father of lights, there is no variation or shadow due to change in you. Let your spirit illumine our hearts through your holy word, turning us from the emptiness of our human traditions to the fullness of life in the beloved one, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our next hymn is number 92, For the Beauty of the Earth. We're going to we're going to do this one old school. <laughs> yeah, handles are provided. <laughs> and my 
shines delight for the mystic harmony linking sense to sound and sight lord of all to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise go to number six please the last verse for thyself best gift divine to the world so freely give the great great love of thine peace on earth and joy in heaven lord of all to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise amen thank you beautiful beautiful hymn and thank you for getting it to go again isn't technology wonderful when it works? And doesn't it just really get your attention when it doesn't? <laughs> yeah. Our reading this morning is from James, chapter 1, verses 17 through 27. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation, or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth so that he would become a kind of first fruits of his creation, creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourself of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself unstained by the world. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. So James's letter tells us that we should be doers of the word and not just hearers only. So our faith, our, our, our what we believe in should impact how we live our life and there should be the receiving, but also the pouring out, you know? So he gives us some other uh, commands, how to live in here, gives us some instructions, but what's important is that we live out our faith, we are doers. So we mortals, we all have this good side and we have this shadow side of who we are, we can all see Sometimes the negative maybe is the most powerful. Do you realize that today, no, not today. Today we are two weeks away from the 20th anniversary of 9-11. 20 years since that incredible evil act. Uh, I don't know, what do you remember about uh, what's, what's the imagery. I think we all have this image of these two towers, the smoke boiling up and just beginning to crumble. And occasionally you'd see people that jump to their death and this whole thing that just came down and changed the world, really, it did. So all of us have that imagery pretty well burnt in our minds. There was one woman who was reported to have watched that that flick, that series of actions, at least a hundred times in the first day after it was over. 
we don't have to have had that many views of it. We've got it pretty well implanted in our brains. We do. So what we did not see on the news and what we did not remember well is the huge outpouring of generosity that was a nation's response to that tragedy. There was this other side. And happens oftentimes, doesn't it? We have this terrible negative thing and somehow it impacts the hearts and minds and souls of people in a way that they become incredibly generous, you know? City of uh, New York was, saw this outpouring. There were people that came down in streams bringing clothes, toiletries, food, anything that they thought would help the people that were the rescuers and that were sorting through all of that. The Red Cross was overwhelmed with people who came to give blood only to find that there were so few survivors. They couldn't use all of the gifts and all of the blood and all of the things. There was this incredible outpouring of compassion and love and desire to try to bring something positive out of this terrible negative thing. It seemed like just everyone wanted to give, everywhere. So there is this two sides of who we are as humans, isn't there? There seems to be something built into this human spirit that at our best compels us to contribute, to create, and to encounter this, this chaos. We attempt to make something out of the mess that we have created. So, some of this kind of reflects the first chapter of Genesis. God created, right? Isn't that what it says? God created. God created. And then God began to create all sorts of things and decided to make human beings, mortals like you and I. God gave us this beautiful uh, place to live. And what did we do with it? We messed it up, didn't we? Yeah, it didn't take too long and sin began to creep into this, to the Garden of Eden. This beautiful place that God had created for mortals like you and I. So I, I think God's intention was that we would be co-creators with God in this, this garden. You know, this beautiful, perfect place that was without sin. And uh, unfortunately, you all know the story. We messed it up. We still live in this kind of, there's this dark side of who humanity is. And we, if ever there was a time, I don't know, we could just go down the list. We kind of, in a way, in our prayers this morning, go down the list of all the, all the things that we, uh, humanity has done to this beautiful creation that God had something else in mind and we have soiled the place badly, if you will, you know? And yet there is this other side of humanity that tries to clean up the mess, if you will, you know? The events like 9-11 are reminders of this dark side of ourselves, but on the other side there is this other piece of who we are. You know, the church, for all of its shortcomings, and there are many through the years, the church has been one place that has taught us about caring for other people and giving to other people, you know? To receive this love that God has for us that we have experienced through our relationship with Christ Jesus, and then we, he teaches us how to give that to others. Sometimes we do it well, sometimes we don't do it as well as we would like, but it is one of the teachings, an important one of the teachings of the church. Many congregations have food pantries. Many congregations have blood drives and vaccine drives. And, you know, we, we engage to bring positive healing into the world that is a struggle for nearly all of us. That's a part of who we are or who we should be. I, uh, 
I want to share a couple things. First of all, there was a neat little, eh, my notes. There's a little story. Come on out of there, baby. So here's a cute little story, and I'll just tell you. It's about kids. And I was thinking of Arthas the other day when I stopped by the house and he's coloring. And it struck me that for the first time I've seen him coloring in a way that had a little structure to it. And usually in, you know, he's kind of like this all over the place with whatever. But there was a sense of actually working at this. And I'm thinking, how many kids, especially as they are young, love to do those crafts? It, it is this creative way of expressing themselves, oftentimes in a world that is, well, challenging. Could you imagine what it would be like to be a four, five, or six-year-old kid in a world that is all adults? Adults that sometimes get along well and sometimes don't so well. And you're that little kid that's kind of gets sometimes, you know, it has to be confusing. And one of the ways of dealing with that confusion is to do something creative. And then to be able to show those that you love this item that you have made, whether it is, whether it is this uh, coloring, uh, a dinosaur, or making something in a craft class, or whatever. Isn't that in a way what we do ourselves as older people? Don't we want to show the Lord God the gifts that we have made to be given to others? You know, don't we have that desire? Doesn't that become a part of this faith journey that we want to share with the Lord God and give thanks for the gifts that we have received by giving some of those gifts away to others, by expressing it creatively. Music, art, pottery, uh, so many things are creative ways of expressing our thanks and our love that we can share with others. Um, helping in that food pantry, saying, thank you, Lord. Except for the grace of God, there go I. You know? How many different ways do we have of act actively engaging and giving, saying, thank you, Lord. There's a scripture, an Old Testament scripture that's become very it's become much more important to me as I reflect upon it. And I think that it speaks to our time in history. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousands of rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression? the fruit of my body, for the sin of my soul. You know, all of that reflects upon the world that we live in. Isn't the world about more, 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 more? I got to acquire more, it's about me. It's just about me, what can I have, you know? Isn't that the world, you know, the, the one who dies with the most toys wins? He has told you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly, humbly with your God? You know, the Lord calls us in this relationship to be a loving, caring, respectful person to others and to give as we have received. It should be, I would hope and pray, kind of a natural response to the faith journey. But it's something that grows within us, I believe. The scripture, don't be just hearers, be doers of the word.
It's not an either or, it's a both and. To hear, to receive, and to share. On the other hand, big part of the faith journey. Amen. Amen. My friends, would you join me in our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be, Consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Take my hands and let them move at the impulse of Thy love. Take my feet and let them be swift and beautiful for Thee. Take my voice and let me sing, always only for my King. Take my lips and let them be filled with messages from Thee. Take my silver and my gold, not a mite would I withhold. Take my intellect and use every power as thou shalt choose. Take my will and make it thine, it shall be no longer mine. Take my heart, it is thine own. Love, my Lord, I pour at thy feet its treasure store. Take my wealth, and I will be ever only all for thee. Take my. Yeah, we done. <laughs> I'm sorry, I kind of got lost there at the end. Huh? Some days the magic works, some days it doesn't. <laughs> oh, technology. You know, and it is the world that we're moving into, folks, like it or not, it's there. Friends, listen to the life-giving words of the beloved one, Christ Jesus our Lord. Look into God's perfect law of liberty and persevere in God's blessing. Live in God's love caring for those in need from a heart filled and blessed by the power of the Holy Spirit. My friends, God has blessed you forever with every perfect gift from above, freeing you to rise and live in the embrace of God's love. Go in peace, my friends. The Lord of life walks with you, is within you every day of your life. Be at peace. Amen. Amen.